So let's see how we actually use and create uh, subroutines in uh, Perl. If you look at this code, uh, here I have the add subroutine. I'm calling the add subroutine later. I'll explain how I declare it, how I uh, define it. I call the subroutine uh, in parentheses. I put some uh, values. Now what happens is that here at this point uh, the subroutine is actually defined. So uh, if you are not familiar with programming that you might not know that what happens is that this part is only executed when someone is calling it. And you can call it several times with different parameters and that's the whole point. So the way it will be executed is that we'll reach this point, then this part will be executed with these parameters and then this is executed and then this is executed. This call is executed here and then the print executed and so on. So we call the function here, add these two parameters, the return value of it comes into this dollar sum, then we print it out, then we call the same subroutine with different values and print it out immediately, we don't put the return value in any variable. Here we call another function which is called add2, it's just a different implementation of the same idea, again with two values we get the result in some variable and then print it out. And then we even have a third function here called sum that has four parameters. And uh, it again returns something that we print, print out. So using the functions that you create is just the same as using any Perl function, except that in most of the cases you would put parentheses around it. It's not a requirement always, it depends when the function is uh, defined, whether it's defined before the user or after, but uh, in order to make it cleaner or clearer, I usually put uh, parentheses around the parameters of subroutines that I created, and uh, I leave them leave the parentheses out uh, in most cases when they are built-in functions or coming from other modules, for example. So let's see how we define the subroutine in Perl. We use uh, the sub keyword. Uh, and then we provide the name of the new subroutine and then a block. And within the block we, we explain what the, the, the code uh, needs to do. Now, there is no parentheses here, there is no uh, declaration of parameters, there is no prototype uh, as in other, some other languages, for example as in C, there is no such thing. You just declare function this way. And then what happens is whenever you call the function Whenever someone calls the add function, for example here, then all the parameters that are uh, given to this subroutine will be pa put into an array, which is a very special array. It's only available within the subroutine and it's special for the subroutine. You don't have to declare it, it's special for pr given by Perl. It's called add underscore. And in this array you'll have all the values that were passed to this subroutine. So when it's called it the first time, with 2 and 3, then this array will hold the numbers 2 and 3. So we have to, we can do with this something, and there are a couple of ways how to do that. Uh, and one of them, uh, one of the most common ways, is uh, to take the array and assign uh, the content of it to a list of scalar values. So in this case, I'm taking this approach and I'm assigning the at r underscore to this list of $x and $y that I've declared just here. Now that's important because um, if you recall the scoping, it means that these variables x and y are only available within this block. So you don't care if the user might have somewhere using a dollar $x or a dollar $y. Um, these are separated and these are private for this subroutine. So now we copied the values from here. Uh, from the array to the scalars, and then we can use the two scalars to add them together, for example, put it in a dollar $z, and then we call return in order to pass it back to the caller. So that's how it gets in back into dollar sum. Now, of course, we don't have, we don't need all these temporary variables like dollar $z, but uh, I used that just for, to make it clean the, uh, the example. So that's one of the ways how you write a uh, subroutine. There is then the add to, which does the same, uh, except it's uh, written a bit li little bit differently. So you recall that we learned the shift function that would take 
uh, elements of an array, uh, take the first element of the array, the leftmost elephant element, and return it and move the whole, all the rest of the array elements one uh, place left. Uh, and here we are using that fun function, but we don't give the name of the array. We don't give the name because that's the default. So if you call shift without any parameters, then it's automatically calling shift on at underscore. So you can just use uh, shift with at underscore and it will return the first value that was in at underscore. Then I call it again and the next value is being placed, well, the, the currently first value is being placed in dollar $y and then without even using a temporary variable I just add them together and return the result. Now you might ask which one to use and well there are people who prefer the first one there are people people who prefer the second one <coughs> then there are people who say that it depends on the on, on the usage and then there are even use cases when there when a mix of the two is the most useful so you would shift out the first or or a couple of the elements from the array from the at underscore array and then use the rest of the values inside at underscore array somehow <coughs> so use whichever fits uh, better for you now there's a third version here called add ugly and i haven't even used it ab above it's uh, it's really it looks ugly and uh, i wouldn't recommend to use it but i wanted to show you that it can work so at underscore is just an, under, uh, an array, a regular array, which is a name, underscore. So as with any normal array, you could in element, reach the elements of it by indexing it. And how do you do that? You replace the at mark with a dollar mark, because now you are talking about a single element. And then after the dollar underscore now, you put a square bracket and then index inside. So this is going to be the first element from the array and this is the second element and we just add them together and return. Now this is the shortest for all these three and for really really small subroutines this is acceptable so like this in this case that might be acceptable but it's still ugly and they probably wouldn't recommend it. And let's see the last example here. This is uh, the sum function. In this case we decided that it's we don't care how many elements uh, the user will uh, pass so we're not assigning to any n fixed number of uh, variables uh, at the the dollar the at and underscore array but in a, instead we loop over with a for each loop so what did this does it sums the elements in the at underscore array so we have just a simple scalar is zero in it and then we go over one by one each element putting into dollar v each value and then adding that value to the sum and returning the sum so as you can see in Perl on one hand you can create a function and then use a, a specific number of elements uh, on the other hand, the user can pass any number of elements uh, she wants and Perl doesn't really care. But it's very easy in Perl, as in this example shows, to create a subroutine that can have a variable name number of parameters, which might be difficult in some of the other languages.